friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise, this time around, and today we are going to be exploring all of the incredible methods that snakes use to move around. There's more to it than you might think. So, let's go! Okay, there might be some of you saying, Hey Annalise, snake discovery did this topic almost two years ago. Meh. Well, that is true. But I bet you didn't know that a few months before Emily did her video, I had covered this topic myself. Now, that first movement video of mine didn't even break 200 views, so I'm not surprised if you don't know about it. So it's all good. I'll tell you now, you don't need to go back and watch it. Today's video will hopefully be much better, even though it contains basically the same information. I mean, it's not like snakes have discovered a new method of getting around in the past two and a half years, eh? So, while I would certainly appreciate the view, if you do go and check it out, it'd kind of be a waste of time, and we're all very busy people, so just hang out here with me in this video and call it a day, yeah? If you ask someone how snakes get around, they'll probably say they slither, which is not wrong, but not really the whole story. There are actually six different methods that snakes use to traverse their environments. But before we get into the movement types, let's take a minute to explore why on earth ancient descendants of snakes decided to ditch their perfectly usable legs. The fossil record suggests that snakes likely evolved from burrowing lizards. Some paleontologists think that perhaps they were actually aquatic lizards, but in either case, big long limbs would create drag and get in the way. So whether they were burrowing or swimming ancestors, Evolutionary pressures favored shorter and shorter, more compact limbs and longer and longer wiggly bodies to better move through their environment, gradually evolving into the mostly legless snakes that we see today. I say mostly legless because some families of snakes actually have retained their legs. They are vestigial and serve no real purpose in locomotions, but you can still see them in the form of spurs near their cloaca. There is a specific gene called the sonic hedgehog gene, nope, I am not making that up, that's actually what it's called, and this gene shuts off the development of legs. In more basal snakes like boas and pythons, that switch gets flipped after the development of hind legs has already started, which is why they still have their tiny vestigial legs whereas others, like more advanced snake families, don't. So, usable legs are out. But what snakes have instead is between 10 to 15,000 muscles. To put that in perspective, we have less than 800. And they will use these thousands of muscles to propel their body over any kind of terrain. Above ground, underground, through water, through trees, and even through air. The type of locomotion that they employ is all about getting the right kind of traction to move in the most efficient way possible given the terrain that they are on at that particular moment. Meaning that sometimes they will even blend movement types moment by moment. So let's check them out, shall we? First up is lateral undulation, also known as serpentine locomotion. This is the iconic windy side to side motion that is probably what most people think of when they think about a snake moving. This is actually the movement type that my Coast Guard snakes use the most. Uh, corn snakes use this a whole bunch too. It's it's the main go-to for most species of snake. What they do is position their bodies in a series of curves and then they use the outside edge of these curves to give themselves enough traction from the ground itself or rocks, sticks, or really just whatever to propel themselves forward. This is a very versatile method of getting around and probably what they use most of the time when moving on the ground and is exclusively what they use when traveling in water. Because they can use any part of their body to push against whatever is going to give them the most traction, they can use this method to generate amazing speeds and change direction in the blink of an eye, showcasing their incredible agility. This next one is really fun to say. Rectilinear locomotion. This is the sneakiest of the movement types. My doom rolls use this a lot when they explore outside, trying to use as little energy as possible to get into the optimum sun absorbing position. What this entails is using their wide ventral scales to walk along. Each of the scales has dedicated muscles moving it and they will lift one scale up, move it forward, place it back down, and then use the trailing edge to pull themselves forward, and then they do that with the next one, and then so on and so on until the end of the snake. What you get is their belly doing this up and down motion here, as opposed to the regular side to side undulation of the last movement. This type of locomotion is very useful if there's not a lot of room, like burrowing or moving through narrow spaces between rocks. It looks very caterpillar-like, 
It's quite slow though, so it's not very useful in chasing down fleeing prey, but it is almost completely silent. So it is effective in approaching an unsuspecting meal when getting into the best possible position to strike. The next movement type is called concertina. This is where a snake will bunch up and then stretch out, moving along like an accordion. It is an effective way to move across the ground, but really shines as a method of climbing vertically upwards. This seems to be my boa imperator to tuba's preferred method of travel, except for when she is on camera, and she even used this when she was an itty bitty baby. It works like this. First, she will draw her back half into a series of curves, sort of like this. Oh, actually, that's a really good demonstration. Sort of like this. And then she will use these bunched up coils to brace herself against the ground while she stretches her head forward. Once extended, she will anchor with her upper half and draw her tail up again. And then she will repeat this process to move. Think of it like an inchworm getting around, but kind of rotate it 90 degrees. What? Okay. This is a good, efficient method of travel for heavy bodied snakes that can use their bulk you're not very bulky though, you're very skinny. That can use their bulk to anchor very well, or if there is not enough space for a normal serpentine movement. And like I mentioned earlier, great for climbing and the most oddly satisfying way to watch. Yeah? So we're halfway through the list. It seems to me like this is a good time to give a quick shout out to my friends on Patreon. Through the support of these fine folks, I can continue to grow my channel, to share my passion for reptiles, and always have a freezer full of frozen dead rodents to keep their bellies full and to scare nosy guests. I'm hugely grateful to my patrons, and through Patreon, these guys get access to all sorts of perks like behind the scenes content, extended bloopers, early access to videos. If you're watching this video as soon as it goes public and are wondering, why there are comments from three or four days ago, that's why. If you are interested in supporting my channel, head on over to patreon.com slash allcanadianreptilegirl and see what's available. If that's not your thing, that's cool. You can still help by clicking that little like button. It looks like that. Or you can check out the links from my other friends at NordVPN. Not only does NordVPN protect you online by encrypting your data, making it impossible for evildoers to steal your stuff and see what you're doing and all that mean evil stuff that evildoers will do, but it is also super easy to use. Open the map, click on the location, and you'll be connected in seconds. It's honestly that easy. Not only that, but by virtually changing locations, you can access your favorite content from anywhere. You live in the US, but you wanna watch The Office on Netflix. No problem, just click on Canada and you can be watching all the cringe-inducing antics of the Dunder Mifflin team. Neat, eh? My family has been using their service for more than two years and I am proud to be affiliated with NordVPN. Check out the links below to see how you can protect yourself online. Okay, but back to our noodly friends and how they move. I swim like noodles. Number four is crotalan locomotion, more commonly referred to as sidewinding. This one is really cool. There are a lot of snakes that can do this if they need to, but only a handful that can actually do it well, like the sidewinder rattlesnake. There's a shocker there. And Saharan horn viper. For these species, this is often the only method of locomotion that works in a lot of their environments. As desert dwellers, they spend a lot of time on steep sand dunes. Normal snake movements would cause the loose sand to collapse beneath them and then run down the dune. Best case scenario, the snake just keeps slithering in place trying to get a grip and barely keeping up with the falling sand. Worst case, they fall all the way down to the bottom of the dune where they will need to try and slither their way back up again. Either way, it would be virtually impossible to hunt prey or find shelter or water with more conventional movement. Sidewinding gets around this by adding a vertical lift to the lateral undulation. Basically, instead of the side-to-side -side movement, they throw their S-curves upwards and you end up with this kind of spiral movement, kind of like an auger. This allows only a tiny part of the snake to be in contact with the sand at a time. And as it slips out under them, the next curve is already flung out with the next tiny part of the snake on the sand. They end up moving in this weird looping sideways motion, leaving long straight tracks that run perpendicular to the direction that they were actually traveling. This motion has the added bonus that it keeps the snake's contact with the blisteringly hot sand to a minimum. If you have ever had to walk on the hot sand of a beach, I'm willing to bet that you can appreciate that advantage, right? 
Next up in our marvelous method of movement is the slide push. Slide push is a kind of a modified version of lateral undulation, which is why it doesn't always show up in some other lists or videos on snake movement that you might have seen before, but it is a distinct movement type. When there's not enough friction, lateral undulation results in the snake just wiggling helplessly in one spot. While hilarious for us to watch, it must be very frustrating from snake, and in the wild, probably life-threatening. Like sidewinding, the slide push is another method for traveling over areas with low friction, and snakes use this on flat, slippery surfaces where regular methods of travel just don't work well. Instead of a series of tight curves, the slide push involves adopting a very wide curve, maximizing traction that they can get along one side of their body. They then push themselves sideways along in a wide arcing curve, gaining a little bit of forward motion with their big lateral movement. They will then repeat this on the other side. It's a slow and steady wins the race kind of deal, but also kind of floppy. They will do this until they can get to a spot where they can resume regular kind of movement. Okay, so we've covered the five main types of movement that snakes use to get around their environment, but there is also a sixth bonus type that is... But there's also a sixth bonus type that is limited to a handful of highly specialized snakes. This movement type might just be the coolest way to get from point A to point B, or maybe the scariest if you happen to be an aphidiophobe, and that is flying. Well, more accurately, gliding. This method is used by the flying snakes of Southeast Asia. They are a group of arboreal, slightly venomous colubrids ranging from two to four feet long. They will climb high into the trees, out onto a branch, sir. They will climb up into a tree and then out onto a branch using some of the methods that I just described. They will then dangle their tail out in a J-shaped bend, lean forward at just the right angle towards their destination, and then fling themselves off. Once in the air, they will use lateral undulation to steer through the air and adjust their pitch. Basically, they become a big, long, squiggly wing. At flights of over 100 meters, they are the gliding animal champ, outgliding flying squirrels, flying lemurs, flying lizards, and all other gliding animals. Not only can they hit impressive distances, they're also able to calculate their exact angle, force, and direction to hit their desired landing spot, and are able to fine tune their approach by slithering through the air, adjusting altitude and direction as they go. Pretty neat, eh? It's hard to imagine how having fewer limbs would actually make you better at getting around, but snakes have figured it out. Land, sea, air, these amazing animals can move through it all with ease, and I think that is awesome. I find watching snakes move absolutely fascinating. Wouldn't you agree? Knowing how they do what they do just adds to the experience, at least in my opinion. Thank you all so much for watching. Another special thanks to my friends on Patreon. And until next time, please remember to nurture all nature. Bye. And you might think. So let's go. Wait, I don't need to wait. That was... <clears throat> Land, sea, air, all these amazing animals can move through. <laughs> I flipped a couple of words, it's fine. So, so we covered five main types of movement. Kind of steal whatever Coke they're drinking. Just whatever, if you're drinking a pop, it's mine.